Mike, you ready? Yeah. All right. Howdy, everyone. This is Brian here with Milky Way Weekly, and tonight I got a special guest with me. It's Mr. Brian Lunster. Brian, how you doing now? Why don't you kind of tell us what we're going to be talking about? I got to get this thing on mute. <laughs> well, I figured we'd talk about just a little bit of everything. How we woke up. How did we wake up? I'll tell you my story. So, um, it was about a year ago. Actually, it's the only time I've ever posted anything on. Um, Move on. It was the 4th of April last year. I was watching the lyrics up at, at night. And enjoy. It was about, I think it was midnight when it was supposed to really kick on. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. And I've always been around the Air Force bases my whole life. I'm an Air Force brat. My, my dad was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. World's greatest fighter pilot. I have to say that. It'll probably shoot me. And so I've heard the frequencies of all types of aircraft. I could tell you what kind of aircraft it was without even looking at it. And what I saw out of the corner of my eye was a triangular craft with three lights underneath it. And it was dead silent. It was about 200 feet up and it disappeared right in front of me. Wow. And no, I wasn't on drugs. <laughs> I wasn't drinking. <laughs> all the standard questions that get asked when I say that. Where were you on? Um, but it, my jaw dropped and I was like, what, what am I looking at? And my first thought that I came to was, okay, well, I live next to three Air Force bases. Eglin Air Force Base is the largest Air Force base in the United States. And you grew up in Destin, Florida? I actually grew up in California. As an Air Force brat, you, you move around a lot. So, okay. But, um, I figured, wait a minute, that thing was dead silent. And I know what I saw, because it was close, and it disappeared. Well, then that's running on zero point energy. And if we have free energy, why is everybody starving? Why are there people starving in the planet? And that's- it's all about that control. That was my red pill. I started looking into that, and then it just, it went down, and I jumped down that rabbit hole as quick as I could. And I, I haven't come up. There's a lot of food down there, so we, all we got to do is just keep eating it. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I keep poking my head out every now and then, but I swear to God, I keep going back down in there. I didn't know you could poke your head back up after you uh, took that pill or jumped down the hole. I didn't know you could come. There must be a ladder. Someone's well, not at least trying. I'm trying. That's you know, I try to every now and then, but I keep slipping and falling. <laughs> <laughs> There's banana peels on that ladder. Indeed, there is. <laughs> But so yeah, when, when do you think, when was this exactly? That was the 4th, April 4, 2017. 2017. So, okay, the reason I ask is because in the past, I started on YouTube, you know, around two years ago. And it seemed like there was a lot of people coming in at that time. And, you know, it. so something happened around that time two years ago when people started coming in and asking these questions. And you know, and it seemed like more and more picked up. And that's the reason I ask. It is in that two year time frame, and it's it's about actually about a year and six months, wouldn't you say? So Well yeah, I, I think more really people are waking up now a lot more are waking up now. That oh yeah. That energy is coming in hand over fist because that, like I told you the other day, when I went out on the water, usually when I talk to people about this, what you get is the look. You know, you get the you saw what? Oh, okay. Well, you have a nice day and take care. But it 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 stopped being that, and it started being, oh, what 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 channel do you have? You got a YouTube channel? Oh, oh, I'd like to check that out. And then they tell, like, just yesterday, started talking to a couple guys at the docks. I was looking for the boat to get on. Started talking to a couple guys, and this guy's like, yeah, man, my brother and I, we grew up down in Haiti, and there was this craft just out of nowhere just showed up and it was so big and low that we could go and stand on this thing and you could tell by the way he was talking he believed it you know he said his brother stood on this wall and touched the thing and then another guy standing right there with him said yeah we're in a matrix you better believe we are this is new to me because that that's never happened before most people just kind of shut you down real quick and 
they go hunt for that cup of coffee. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, let me ask you a question. Do you think there's any correlation between that siding and the ascension symptoms, so to say? Well, I know that I know that that something took me outside, made me look up that night. I've always been a stargazer, but that night in particular, you know, I really wanted to see the lyrics. You know, I wanted to watch the meteor shower. So I think that's happening for a lot of people, you know. I, but since then, this relationship, now that was Air Force. I know that was an Air Force craft. Right. You, I can tell the difference between a human-driven craft. Humans usually do this thing like, what's going on? You know, I'm looking around. There's a nervousness there. There's that energy you can feel. Yeah. And with the ETs, and this is every night for the past month, I'm able to go out. I bring my intention out the front door. It's usually around nine o'clock. I look up, and immediately I either get three flashes or I get a blue craft to fly over. Last night it was a blue craft and four so flashes. I don't know what the you four think it's flashes almost like you're summoning it. I'm walking out, I meditate. It's basically that CE5 initiative. That's what started me on that. And I, but I don't, I don't necessarily follow those protocols. Not for the intent or anything, right? No, I just say, I know when I walk out, I'm going to look up and I'm going to see it. And it's not me conjuring it in my head. I look up and look back and then I see it and I go, my brain still goes, okay, this is what you saw. You saw a meteor, you saw this, you saw something else. I'm always trying to, I have this program in my head that always says it was something else. Good wording too. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> it's a program. Yeah. And I'm learning how to break through that program. And it's happened so many times. And so in the beginning, I was, I was nervous. I was fumbling fumbling for my phone and I was, I was hitting record and it stopped being that nervous thing and it started being that moment between us you know right. this new friendship acknowledging the rest of my family that's in outer space and out in the universe and that's what it is we're all family and it's it's cool it sends chills down my spine every time I it happens because I always walk into it with this is going to happen. And then it happens. And I still have that, that glitch <laughs> that, that wants to redefine it as some kind of Air Force drone or whatever. There's well, a, like I said, that takes us back to programming. It is. It's all in that programming. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> when you, that first time, the first time I saw that crap, that took me out of my programming. It made me realize that the universe was much bigger than I had thought it was before. Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> and it's extremely awesome. And since then, I get I think after that I started looking into stuff. I've always always watched the rovers on Mars, you know, since they first came out, what was it, ninety four, ninety five, something like that. Mm -hmm. In the nineties when they first you could put it on your laptop and I remember going, Oh, this is just awesome. And you'd get like one frame every hour or something. <laughs> Look, here's, yeah. this, this is Mars, this is another planet. Like, okay, Dad, sure that's cool. Yeah. You know, but I've always looked. But until I call them downloads, until these downloads happen, I started seeing different things. And it has nothing to do with wanting to see it. You know, a lot of people We'll say, oh, there's that program again that says it's pareidolia. You know, it, it's not. A statue on Mars is simply a statue standing up. A ruin on Mars is simply a ruin. It's not some boulder that gets shaped by weather right. many, many years ago by, you know, a storm, electrical storm that never happened or a crash. You know, it's, it is what it is. And it can be right in front of your face. And we can still try and go back into the old programming, which is cool. But the fact that I'm able to discern that now and know that I'm not crazy because for a while there, for about six months, I was going, 
Oh, no. I'm losing it. Something I got to Maybe I should get a CAT scan or something. Get this checked out. There's nothing wrong. And the other we thing can. was I got sober. Right. I I spent a lot of years just deadening myself to what was going on because it was just it's not right, you know. The there's something wrong with the way people treat each other, and it became real easy for me as a young adult till just up to a few years ago that if I could have some beer, or, you know, I, I went through a bout where I was, you know, we, most of us have gone through something like that. But the minute I got sober is the minute this stuff really started coming into play. I, you know, I thought I damaged it, but no, I, I got healthy. And that's when it all started coming about. It was, it's awesome. Well, like I said, that's, you know, kind of what happened to me too. You know, I, I was a train wreck before. And then when I got sober, that's when it kind of hit me. And, and like you were saying, there's a lot of people in this community that really are, that go through addictions and, you know, emotional problems and things like that. Because, you know, and I, it seems like it's the ones getting activated early. So, you know, I think, I think the addictions and all that is something to, help you process or help you cope with what you're feeling because you can't understand it. And that's why I think, you know, if some of these people that's getting hit with these symptoms are going crazy. And that's why so many people's angry and stuff. They don't understand these emotions going on. That's right. And checking the human residence, when you see stuff shit going downhill for people, like all of a sudden you know that everybody in traffic is, is edgy and angry and just thrown off a little bit. You get this human residence, and this is something I do. I don't care if it's people in Walmart or wherever in the world getting angry, or if it's, you know, a little spat between my beautiful wife and I am. I check it, and usually that thing is wavering lately and doing some crazy stuff. So I think more and more people are getting these downloads and oh, yeah. not knowing what to do with them. And I swear, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I swear on the 18th during that planetary alignment, I think it's going to ma- trigger some mass, hopefully awakening or whatever you want to call it. But I think it's going to trigger a lot of people. And, I, <laughs> so, believe, I believe it's going to be for the positive. I believe oh, I do too. it'll be a growing pain. I believe yeah. I think it's going to be a growing pain, but it's going to be in the end. I think we've already pushed past that that negative force that that's been controlling everything. I think that's already broken. I, and that's what I feel. And I, you know, when you get into this and you start, you start digging in, at first you go, wait a minute, what the, you know, you go, what, what's this, are you kidding me? And then you start going, oh, wait, earthquake, planet, we got all this stuff going on. We've got celestial bodies up there that knowing, wait a minute, we're moving through the universe like this and not this. And then you go, oh, and this this anxiety comes, and you start to study and study it and, and try and understand it. The place that I've come to is that I've come to this, this peaceful place where no matter what happens, yep. there there's this sense of of unity and there's this cohesion like it's like a like an epoxy coming together you know you gotta have two sides of this thing to kind of make the the glue work and i think those things are coming together duality or the epoxy analogy let's get to the chemtrail have you noticed um have you noticed planes going over now and they're not looks like they're not spraying a thing oh yeah and then another plane will come, not spraying something. And then it's like a two different chemicals coming together. And all of a sudden, that thing is, that cloud will grow exponentially. And they disperse quick, too. Quick, baby. Really quick. Yep. Especially here. They, they're seeding clouds around here. And just shoots, it shoots straight up. They just. That's yeah. the way they are here. That's the way they are here. I mean, they look like I'm at the beach or something. There's big cumulus clouds. I'm like, geez. Well, but no crazy. rain. Yeah, they start at the ground and they just shoot up and all of a sudden you're covered. There's a wall of them everywhere. And I've been looking online and everybody, the same skies I saw in, in California when I was growing up, you know, you get that red, 
desert sun. Everybody, we have this, we moved here to Florida in 91 and the skies are different. It's just California in the high desert to here, the skies are just different. Uh, now they're the same everywhere. Everybody has the same type of new clouds and it looks different. It looks the same everywhere. We got the same weird stuff happening in the geometric shapes in the clouds. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it seems like when high definition t- TVs went into effect, so did the skies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it just totally changed. So I guess our skies are in high def now. Well, they've, gotten, they've definitely got an upgrade. I'm just waiting on the breakdown. Because <laughs> eventually, those man-made systems, they're going to, you know, a BMW, as smooth as it is and as, as balanced as it is, eventually breaks down. Yep. <laughs> True. So, and they're playing with literal fire here. They really are kind of playing with it. I don't think they can keep that energy out as much as they want. I think that that energy coming in is definitely upgrading us. I'm, I always look at my kids and I wonder, you know, I can tell in their eyes. You, you remember, I don't know about you, but when I was three, I probably couldn't operate a phone like that. I know a lot of it's programming, but I've noticed yeah. my son doesn't even know how to read. He's really young, and but he can operate this phone and get it to do whatever he wants to do. These kids have come in brilliant. They're just, yeah, I mean, it's like they were programmed to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's something else. I hate to keep using that word, but I mean, <laughs> you know, what more can you say that? Well, we're all volunteers. I've learned that. We've all volunteered to come back. What is it someone said recently? I heard him say that. All the people that are on the planet right now have always been here. The people that lived and died, now they're all here. So everybody that's living on the planet now has already been here before. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, past lives, yeah. Past lives and all that. I have a question for you, though. When you look up in the skies, are you seeing, what I see is, I remember when my wife was pregnant and we went and got the, uh, an ultrasound for the kids. I was always able to look at that image, the 2D or the 3D. They they do them both now for the ultrasound, and I would I could see them plain as day. You get, your brain kind of fills in the blanks, and you, I could see the kids. And when I look in the skies now, in fact, with little story, when my wife was pregnant with our fourth child, we have five. But when she was pregnant, we're, we're done. But when she was, <laughs> when she was pregnant with Tristan. She had three egg sacs side by side. And I went down to my knees, but I saw it before the technician even noticed it. And they didn't know what was going on. Now, Tristan just showed up, but that threw me. Triplets, are you kidding me? But yeah, no, being able to read that and see it plain as day and have my brain fill in the blanks, when I look up in the sky, buddy, I'm, my brain is doing the same thing. And it's not a created manifestation in the sky. It's it's this look up, and I can see these crafts, these triangular crafts. Sometimes they're different shapes, but when you see squares cutting through clouds and different chemtrail formations, it, for me, it's plain as day. Now, it has definitely gotten me labeled as a wacko, number one, by getting on YouTube and saying, okay, look up, there's these crafts up in the sky flying over us all the time. But you got to wonder what's what's block, trying to block all this stuff coming through. I, uh, Jeff P has got a, he talks a lot about it. You know, he's really detailed some of that stuff, but I'm seeing a lot of craft in the skies 24 seven. I can look, look up and see any particular cloud. And it's not like just looking up and seeing the state puff marshmallow man with your mind or a bunny rabbit or a, anything else. I'm seeing geometric shape. I'm seeing triangles, rectangles, ovals cut out. You know, you, you got a certain layer of cloud and all of a sudden there's this hole in it. And it's like, well, hey, I see you. How's it going? And my neighbors ask me, why are you always, why are you always looking up in the sky? And my response <laughs> when my neighbor asked that of me, I said, well, why don't you ever look in the sky? 
Now, I, I haven't really told her, you know, I think there's craft up there, <laughs> but that's what I'm seeing. And it's like looking at the, that, it's like looking at the open town with my kids when I could see them before they were even born and be able to see features. It's kind of what I'm, I'm picking up now. Hmm. You know, I've had a lot of people actually sending me in pictures and stuff of like, triangles and circles and all that just like perfectly cut out of the sky yeah like i said it's amazing it happened more and more i don't understand i want to kind of go back real quick though uh, you were talking earlier about you know all the craft and all that yeah. and before the show we were talking about you know these people that are going through the ascension process do you feel like maybe you're almost you're like a beacon a light do you think that I do. I do. When I say that, it's not a, I'm, man, I have a lot to learn. I'll, I'll, I'll be learning. I'll be trying to work through this 10 lifetimes from now. I feel like, you know, there's but the way we're constructed. I don't think there's any way that we can process what's actually happening. Oh, what, yeah. What's going on. I don't think we can do it. Even in our wildest imaginations until we, hit that next level, which I feel we're doing. I really feel like there is an ascension process happening. It's, a, it's an evolution of species that we're moving there, but yeah. Yeah. Instead of using a flashlight to contact these ETs, and this is just, I do it with my mind. I imagine that my hand is a, a flashlight and I'll go out at a specific time with, with my intention. And I go one, two, three, and eight times out of 10, unless these guys are cruising, doing something else important, they seem to always want to make time to go one, two, three, right back at me. And of course, being the guy I am, I always do this afterwards. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, I got ice cream. <laughs> Well, see, that's yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, I, you know, I think I think our lights are shining brighter. I think it is almost like we're beacons out there. Yeah. And, you know, that's like tomorrow night. I'm I'm going to be getting into that. What you were hitting on there, with our DNA is altering, and it's altering at a rapid pace. From like you was talking about the UVC that's coming in, we're getting pounded right now. And also, like I mentioned it tomorrow night, but I don't know if you knew there's a supernova in Sirius B right now, and it's Oh. putting out enough energy hitting us right now that our sun puts out in its entire lifetime. No, so I did not. Really getting pounded I, right I heard yeah. something about, well, I've heard about the energy coming in, but I didn't know about that from Sirius A and Sirius B. It's a, it's a supernova that happened just right by Sirius B. Oh, no, there's nothing going out in the universe. Uh, nope. <laughs> no, that's, and, that's, you know, that's, that's not included yeah, what our sun's putting out, too. Our son's pounding us right now, too. Yeah. So, I mean, we're getting pounded. No wonder the screen's raising it's all over the place. If you can see, I'm fried. <laughs> yeah. I, I stayed under the banner, the the awning on the on the pontoon yesterday. I stayed under that thing, and I'm, I'm blistered. <laughs> How about getting tired, though? Are you getting getting real tired? Do you have uh, you well, kind of waving it out? The, the day before yesterday, I was completely wiped out. I mean, just wiped out. Like, I, I couldn't get out of bed. I kept falling asleep. Well, yeah. yesterday, I was, you know, back bright and shiny. Man, I got up again today, and I was like, oh, my God, it's happening again. And, I mean, it wasn't as bad as the other day, but, I mean, I've been dragging ass all day. I, I'm just now starting to get going. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon as it starts, it starts and stops. It's like on a dime. There doesn't seem to be any gradual into it either. No, it's just get your ass time. Yeah. <laughs> get your ass time. And then it's, there's high, uh, I've noticed at the other end of it, there's high um, high energy and uh, I've noticed my the creative side of my, my brain's working a little better. I'm able to do some of the things that I, I have thought about doing that and procrastination. Procrastination. It's the worst thing in this. It's either you're either not doing it really bad 
and you're laying down and having to take that nap or you're getting it together and it's happening just like that. That's the difference in it. There seems to be no happy medium. <laughs> Tell me about it. Man. Um, well, um, you, yeah. Hmm. I want to know more about the, this, the contact, like, have you ever have you ever done it? Have you ever? Now, now I've seen like lights in the sky, or you know, and I know some of them were UFOs, and I got some vid a little bit of video of one, but you know, I've never seen it like where it's just clear, clear. You know what I'm saying? I have never. The, well, the first time I saw that triangle craft, I know mm -hmm. that that was human driven. Now I know that for a fact, just being where I am. That was just that one in a billion chance that I happened to be out there looking up and that thing cruised over and disappeared at that moment in front of me and made no sound. I really feel deep down inside that that was a human driven craft or maybe human driven and some, somebody else was helping along. No, you got to push that button instead of that button. Maybe, I don't know. You never know. But the difference is, is when I'm, I go out and I bring the intent, I look up and they show and they show eight times out of 10. And here lately, it's been every time I go out, it, I usually do it. Well, I want to say, because I don't want it, I'm next to these military bases. And every time those things show up or I go out to the water and I meditate, they show, and then here comes the military. And they come around, they've got drones, and they're not just flying next to me way over there, they're doing patterns right above my head. Do you, I mean, do you think that goes back to almost being like that beacon? I do. I think that just like the ETs are able to um, see you and, and yeah. read your, your kindness or your, your anger or anything like that, I think that we snatch that technology up too. So yeah. when they show up, some there's, in, there's energy in, in everything. Right, I mean, we lived in, in an energetic world. It's all energy. Everything is based on energy, and the they can tap into that. When that happens, yeah, I think there's kind of like a a beacon going up, a real bright one too, when yeah. that contact is being made. Because that that friendly contact that's happening, I, mean, I know. I think I really believe it's changing, but. For a long time, for the past 50 years, they didn't want that happy-go-lucky contact. You know, who was it? Um, Valiant Thor. I don't, you know, whether that's a, a sign-off or whatever. That guy comes from Venus, and he's like, I've got all the, the I've got medical things. You, can you get rid of your weapons of mass destruction? Because they're messing with the other dimensions in the universe. They're messing with everybody when you explode their we're like, no. Another ET, set of ETs come across. They say, hey, you know, we'll go ahead and give you this for free, and you can keep your new. We go, oh, okay, that sounds good. We made a bad decision there. Yeah. But this guy presented, this guy had no thing. I don't know if this is real. I've not discerned it all the way, but that's just the thing. The old habits still come into play. The mm -hmm. training that they've been taught, you know, shoot first and ask questions later. All that kind of stuff comes into play, but I honestly don't feel that that's happening as much anymore. I don't. So I still I'm here next to these Air Force bases, and they managed to come. You got to try it, B. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you, I'll, I'll end up trying it for sure, probably I, tonight. <laughs> I get a lot of, you get this. Um, people are like, "Oh man, I've had a lot of subs come and go because they think I'm summoning demons." Man. I just don't feel that they're demons. It's not a, they're not, or they call them the fallen angels. I've actually researched and gone in deep into trying to understand the word fallen and the angel. I've pulled them apart. Well, it, still, I think they're just, it'd be like us going to a different planet and shining our light down on the natives and having them call me the devil, you know? I think there's good and bad, there's duality and everything, and I, but, you can sense when you've got the negative in the room, right? You can sense when you got somebody positive in the room. But I've never felt anything negative 
from his life. The only thing I have felt is apprehension on the part of the humans flying over and kind of checking it out. Sorry, I had to take care of something. Somebody got put on timeout and I have no idea why. Do not put anybody on timeout unless they say something just absolutely vulgar, please. Anyway, sorry, bro. All right, well, we'll shift gears again and we'll go back to the ascension. Um, how did your symptoms start? Like, oh, how did you? Man, uh, well, that's an ongoing process for me. That can, is still going. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, they change, get worse, <laughs> get better. <laughs> I've, got, I've got that darker Indian type of skin. I've never gotten rashes or anything like that in my life, but in my arms, I'm getting these weird rashes that kind of creep up at night and then in the morning i'll notice that they're gone that's weird you say that i just saw a video today now i haven't experienced this personally but i saw where people were getting rashes and stuff like that and they they didn't know it was an unknown phenomenon oh those things out in california i wonder if that's part of it or not because it's a new thing for me but just the um the energy and the oh Another symptom that's happened with me in the past year. Now, I've always worked in the restaurant business. I was a bartender, chef. I've done all that stuff. I love to cook. Love to cook. I've always been. Yeah, that's always what been I do. <laughs> barbecue, man, I can cook it up. I can, I can cook really well. I'm, I'm the man. I'm a guy in the family who always does all the cooking. Me too. I went to culinary and school and all that crap. <laughs> I used to love to go and pick up the meat and everything. I have found that I, when I go, and I, we, we've got a Walmart up here, I got a Walmart, I cannot go down the meat aisle and pick anything up anymore. Uh, I can't do you it. You know what it's called? Kind of, it's the some of it's, well, actually, the meat's kind of, it's gone downhill. I can't pick it up. Now, I haven't gone vegetarian. I still will eat meat, but it has to be, I, I have to spend a lot of money when I do it. But I found my body is is changing as far as what it's asking me to get. You know, now I've noticed that too. I can't eat beef. I love steak, man. Love it. And it just sits so heavy on me now and I feel I feel bad after I eat it. That's it. I feel bad. I, when yeah. I do eat it, I feel I feel slowed down. I feel tired. And it usually it doesn't go away within a couple hours of like a day. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Like, and I know that most people are like, "Oh, pork," and I, but pork is one of the few things that I can kind of eat. That and deer meat that don't make me feel that bad. Chicken even starts to make me feel bad, but it's probably because it's so full of shit. You know, I mean, all yeah. the crap they put in it. Man, the yeah. last time I went and got chicken, it. I'm I'm going to do it anyway. Sam's <laughs> Club went and got yeah. they got these chicken. This has been like three years ago. They had these chicken breasts. You know, and the pack was the, the mightiest pack ever. You can get 15 <laughs> bucks. The chicken breasts were literally on your screen. They took up the whole screen, you know, of a regular laptop. I put oh, that on the grill and it cooked it. I have never seen chicken do what that did. You could bounce it off the ground. That stuff had so many, so many antibiotics in it. It was disgusting. Mm. And, that, and food like that, when you're getting it, <laughs> It's gone downhill so far. About the only time if we do get meat, I'll go to Publix or I'll go to a specialty meat store. My body still occasionally is saying, hey, I want I want a piece of bacon, you know? <laughs> yeah, I love bacon, dude, can help it. <laughs> but when I do, I'm paying a lot more for it, a lot more to get good quality stuff, you know? stuff that wasn't under stress. You can tell that when you're eating meats and the, the animal has been under some kind of stress, man, that transfers right over to you. In, in you, know, you are exactly right, dude. You hit the nail on the head right there. Yep. And you're, it getting frequencies. you're getting those negative frequencies from it. You I'm telling you, it depends on how they're slaughtered and everything. Yeah, you're so spot on. Dude, this is just a little side info fact that I think is interesting. Do you know why Kentucky Fried Chicken had to change to KFC? 
No. All right. I get shut down for this. I'm hey, I don't know. Um, I because fans club, so you know you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the they couldn't call it chicken anymore because it was so genetically altered that they the the whatever the FDA wouldn't let them call it chicken no more. Shut shut the front door. Yeah. <laughs> were they printing it now? I don't know. I don't know. They were talking about these little chickens with big old, like they were on steroids or something. Basically. Oh, yeah. Little bitty chickens are like balls with little nubs for feet. They can't move in the bins and all of that. And they got, they've cut their, that's horrible, man. It is. It is. So, yeah, you're on some subject. So yeah, that's. And yeah, we can do it. They, people, I can't eat it anymore. I can't do that kind of stuff. I just can't. Fast food, it kills me, man. It really does. With the vegetables, I heard, I heard this. I heard that, and I believe it's true, the plants, they, you know, they grow, and when you consume the plants, the vegetables, they, that's what they live for. They're like, oh, yeah. That yeah. energy transfer comes over, and it's like, there's a positive thing. They grew, you grew them, there's this relationship, and then you consume the vegetables, and then that energy you get from it. I just feel, transfer. feel so much better, man. I feel a lot better when I, I mean, I'm eating more vegetables now than I ever have, and I feel better than I have. But every time I take that bacon, man, and my, that, the, that old guy, that program, there's this yeah. old hardwired <laughs> program. It's like, is that bacon? <laughs> mm, bacon, like on the Simpsons, Homer. Mm, bacon is yeah, <laughs> slobber. The drool coming down. And I still have a Benny for ice cream. It's got to be the, it's got to be the blue bell, the Dutch. Man, child. I used to, I used to have to have ice cream every night. And like, man, I, I can't tell you the last time I ate it. To be honest with you, and I used to eat, like I said, every night before bed. And, but that's another thing. Like, you know, they say that milk and like, man, let me tell you, if there's anything I love, cheese and like all kinds of different cheese. But man, that's one of the worst things in the world. You can eat dairy. It was not meant for mankind. It really no. wasn't. <laughs> well, well, no, Joey. Yeah, there's a there's a blockage that happens there. That's for that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm still eat. This is the this is my ice cream portion at night. <laughs> Dutch chocolate and maybe some. Um, and I I really started falling in love with that almond milk. I love it. I never drank it. Like I said, I, I don't really drink that much milk anymore though. Either. And I used to love milk. Like you said, I mean, our diets are evolving, too, they with are. the way our bodies are. I have so. to keep that bottle of water in the, in the refrigerator now. Uh, I checked. I did that. I went through that time where I was checking. the. I was really looking into the foods and the bottled water. The best bottle of water is that Zephyr Hills, that stuff you've got. It, it's, it's better for you as far as the, the H2O and all, the... Um, is it the um, hydration? It doesn't have all those acids and all that stuff they put in, like Dasani and all that anymore. But the funny thing was, is that I went and did all those tests on the water to see the different types of bottled water, uh -huh. uh, and then the tap water was the best. The tap water was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it doesn't surprise me at all. Like, well, I mean, I, I know uh, I can't remember what company it is. But one of those companies that sells this bottled water, literally, they're pumping water out of the whatever city it is they live in, live in and putting it straight into the bottle. Yeah, it sounds no like it. No nothing. Like <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard this about, like, supposedly Nestle's buying up all the water rights in California or trying to or something. I, I did hear something about that recently. Just give me across that one. Um, America Incorporated. Um, isn't didn't Nestle like merge with? I'm not gonna say it, Monsanto maybe or uh, somebody. Oh, yeah, they're, they're definitely a division. Oh, are they? Okay. Monsanto is a division of Nestle. Yeah. yeah. Bear basically owns Bear. almost everything. That's what I heard. It all Bear. Uh, well, hopefully within this growing process that we're that we're going to have to go through, we get it all figured out. I, you know, it all for me, it still comes down to that, 
that first question that I had, if we have the ability to, if we have free energy, whether I feel like that it, uh, that was given to us, you know, oh, yeah. and it was given to us that we'll, we'll crash a ship and we'll, we'll make them think that they conquered that on their own. Right. But we have free energy and, and there's so many people still going through it in the world today. And that breaks my heart to, uh, to see kids suffering or anybody suffer. I can't stand to watch it. And that's got to change. We've got, we've got to be able to get past that. And we've got to, got to restructure our priorities and, and take care of one another. And like love. Wayne was told, Wayne, by the way, I love Wayne Steiger. Man, that's like the, as I told you, that's like the, uh, that's the cool, he's the cool uncle, man. That guy is awesome. Oh, he's one of my brain crushes. <laughs> yeah. He's the greatest crush for me. <laughs> but we've got to, we've got to really be able to love one. Another. And that unconditional love he was talking about the other day, that really mm -hmm. got me thinking about what, how I view unconditional love. And where where am I coming from with this? You know, even with this flashlighting back and forth with these ETs, you know, what is my what am I wanting out of it? You know, I don't feel like fame or anything. Who, who wants that fame? That sounds like a real pain in the rear. <laughs> All right. So it's this is it's become more of a relationship. And I think we need to figure out the how to get back in touch with having a relationship with our neighbor, you know, even when our neighbor is being nasty, you know, how do we, how do we get, especially when they're being that way, especially when they're being that way. And I'm starting to learn how to react differently to those negative things. You know, the neighbor going, well, you know, what's wrong with you crazy? Man? What's you, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's they, they're on their journey. What, what whatever's going on in their day, they're maybe having a really bad day. I've got to in that moment not add to that negativity in their life. And that's how we I think we break the cycle as we 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 turn it around and go, I, you know, I understand you're going through it. I'm real sorry. And then leave it at that and let that die down. I get along with my neighbors here. They're good people. Some of them still do the gossip thing, they talk behind your back and and that's uh, okay because they're on they're on their journey. Yeah. So. That's great. Well, you know, have you ever, do you know there's actually three golden rules to ascension, and you know they're so simple, but man, I'm telling you, they're so hard too. I I looked at this up. I've been doing some research on all of this for a while, of course. But anyway, I just found this the other day, and I'll read them to you. All right. Number one is to serve others with absolutely no attachments. And it sounds easy, you know, but like I said, with the no attachments, that's the catch, <laughs> you know? Number two is practice unconditional love for everything, everything. I mean, you know, the leaves, the grass, the tree, everything, everybody. Right. And then number three, so simple, sometimes the, the hardest, forgiveness. Yes, that's the if one. If you do those three things, then you won't have any problems. <laughs> but like I said, it's easier said than done. I've found my, I've found, I've been going back and looking at old me in that past lifetime on that other planet and that, <laughs> and going, you know, you held, you held all these grudges for these certain people that came across you in your life that just really tried to damage everything about you and you still continue to, sh to love them and then i found I, even when you get away from those people if you, you you still show them love and you get away i'm i'm i, I do well with the first two I've, I've always been able to just give it away yeah. but i found that there's these old um angers that i've been shedding here lately and really, I, I said I'd forgiven them. Like I say that, I say it out loud to people, I've forgiven them. But did I? And I know, I've noticed that when I hadn't, and I kind of, I bottled that up. Yeah. That comes back tenfold. 
And it's always there in the back of your mind. And it's so much easier to let it go. Now I've started letting those old angers go. And I've actually started trying to heal some relationships. Broken and have you really been going broken. through that the past few days? The lot been coming up? Because, man, I'm telling you, I got hit freaking like a freight train the other day. Yeah. And then, you know, I released it, and then phew, it went out flying <laughs> everywhere, you know? Yeah. It There's does cash. come back. I got angry at the chemtrails. The last time I was making a video, I was like, <laughs> I think it was about eight months ago. You, yeah, just keep it up. Dude, I was down in the dumps for a week. I didn't make, I didn't take a video or nothing. I was just, I, that bounced back on me so hard, it wasn't even funny, buddy. I've been there. Now, that's funny. I was getting ready to go something. You're talking about the bouncing back. See? We were talking earlier about the clouds and the chemtrails and all that. Like, with all that cosmic radiation coming in. I can't stop I it. mean, that, that's what they're doing. That's They're trying to slow down our evolution. I don't, you know, I think maybe some of it might be for you know, whatever, magnetosphere and blah, blah, blah and make it rain i'm telling you they're trying to yeah they are trying to shield us from that cosmic radiation that's so bad for us and you know i'm sure it is not good for us but uh, they're watch, talking about the other effects watch this being sources plan though watch that part of it being sources plan they're doing what they're doing all of a sudden the stuff breaks through and they can't get out <laughs> they can't get out and then we're we're drenched in it you know and that and then it happens like that. Well, yeah. it, it seems like everything is going towards Source's plan, God's plan, you know? Yeah. I don't know. The only <laughs> other way to work it out. My definition of God has changed in the past year. I mean, it's what? <laughs> it's, it's changed what? It's, it used to be this, I'd go into church, you know, we went to church maybe every three times a year mm -hmm. before this. And I remember always going in there and really trying to work the process and thinking, I don't understand this. How am I, why do I have to fear God? I don't understand that part. I don't get it. That didn't make any sense. Why do I have to live in fear of him? It just didn't make sense. And after all this stuff has come down, I, I understand God differently. I, I'm looking at the, the center part of the universe, which is all of us. Right. together i didn't call it god i just say source that's just how i do it's got my, well, got you know, my really source is the most practical way really anyway because it all even if it's god or source or what it all it all goes back there anyway that's because that's where it all came from it's here in the now oh yep. i got a question for you right What's this with the number 12? Have you ever said anything about the number 12? About this maybe being the 12th version or the 12th matrix? Well, you know, I mean, it all it goes back to the 12 books, the 12 disciples. Everything is in 12. I don't know. It breaks down to three, you know, and I'm a life path number three. Right. I, you know, flashing at me three times. <laughs> See? It's always three. It's three back and forth. Now, right for last, they did four. No, last night, four. He, he flashed four times. I'm like, what is that about? What are you, what? <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. That and my phone, listen, this was new last night. I'll tell you about it. My phone is not on vibrate. I don't keep it on vibrate ever, just in case I'm doing something. I don't want it to vibrate in the middle of it. So I had that part off. I had it in my arm. What was saying? Oh, I, I went and said, oh, was, was that you again? You know, the blue streak went over. Was, oh, was that you? And then I got the, the four flashes, and then my phone vibrated in my armpit. Now, I don't know if that was, I don't know, man. But see, you see how my mind's doing. It's like there's no way that can be possible. There's no way they did that. <laughs> my phone's not a vibrate, though. That was the first thing I checked, and then I told my wife. Told my wife, she's like, "Oh, honey, that's just great." That's your life. <laughs> Good boy. Is it your bedtime, dear? <laughs> but, 
I'm gonna get one day she's gonna she's gonna be out there and she's gonna look and she's gonna see and, and you know she's gonna do the same thing. What well, now that's the thing, I mean, trust me, you're helping her for the future because I hope, uh, man. Let me tell you like I've got the coolest mom in the world and like you would believe just since she's seen the changes that it's made in me with you know the meditation the essential oils going through all this process yeah well i mean she's always been intuitive and stuff but like she has sparked and now she is going on her own personal journey and like man it's a beautiful thing too just to see people kind of come out of it and ask you know start asking questions instead of going with what everybody else is telling you yeah that that's the cool part it does that's help but it, it has, it's, man, it, I used to be, I was angry, buddy. I mean, I, you know, I was, I was boozing and doing all that stuff for years and living that, that uh, reckless lifestyle that should have killed me. Mm -hmm. And there was anger there. There was a lot of anger, but this is, it's changed. I used to be kind of, uh, I don't know, when I got sober, it was like, oh, come on, what's this for? I, I want to drink anymore <laughs> and do any stuff. This is, this just sucks. Yeah. But then this stuff started happening and then this this process started happening for me and i've got this excitement it's an excitement now for life and it's like it is i feel like i'm i i feel like i've always been here as an observer and mm -hmm. and watching and learning and going through this process and i understand now that there was a reason that i had to go through that there's you know and i put my family through but i put my family through hell no you tell them me too but Guess what? It, it, it's all come back. Everything is, it's, it's been healing for, for a long time. And my family's doing good, you know, and it could have gone the other way just as easily, but I feel like that that's happening for a reason too. But that peace and joy that I was talking about earlier that you come to with this, you know, you, that's the only, that's the logical place. Not logical, that's the emotional place we, I, I have come to. It's just this sense of utter peace and joy and this relax. And now I'm just like, dude, this is the wildest ride ever. Yeah. This, this is just, it's awesome. And I see something happen in this guy that's like, man, is this is just awesome that we're here to experience this. We are, buddy, we are a winning lottery ticket. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to be able to wake up each morning and not be like, oh, God, you know. Now I'm like, so what's today now going to bring, you know? Yeah. Well, except for the other day when I couldn't get going <laughs> at all. But for the most part, I'm, I, you know, I'm ready to get today going. Dude, we were out in the universe. And we stopped at some Q gas station out in the middle of nowhere, you know, Star Trek Q little way station. And we bought the luckiest thinking quick pitch ever to be able to come here and go through this process. And that's, that's like the level of excitement that I have when I get up, you know, I'm 45, my, but my body has changed. I remember being 35 and feeling like I was 80. I'm 45 now. And I, I, I have this sense of awe and wonder when I'm looking at my children and I'm seeing the beauty and awesome. even, you know, the, the light can't get, the light usually comes into the, the womb, you know? And I've had, I've had a lot of wounds just like everybody. Everybody's kind of, a lot of people beat themselves up. Just, oh, yeah, like I said, a lot of people in this community, I think it's because of not understanding what, you, what you're going through at those times. And like I said, I think that's why you cloud everything and, you know, lash out at people. You, you can't process those, process those emotions. But I'll yeah. tell you the most beautiful thing really of all this is like is watching how all these people have found each other for support and love and things like that. That that's the most beautiful thing that I've witnessed through this. That for me has really come together. I remember in the beginning I was uh I was really struggling to find anybody that I could have a good conversation with about this <laughs> without it without it ending up being a Baker acted phone call, you know, but we're just this guy's got to we get to check him out. But right. now, I, have you also noticed that everybody seems to be perfectly spaced apart? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's like a divine plan. 
I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here. And everybody is going to be just, oh, let's go ahead and call it 12 inches away from each other. <laughs> well, you know, and I think – I think it's almost like you were talking about earlier, being a beacon. I think it's almost like we're spaced out like that. We're putting out this energy going out, you know? We're a beacon, and we're sending out, you know, a I've distress. I've never been a beacon. I have never been a beacon in my life, but I do feel like I'm I'm able to put out some light now. I and I, I, you know, I still don't like to think of myself that way. Like, I don't. Well, I'm not perfect either. There's still these moments, and especially in that when that energy comes back down. In yep. those moments, I find that there's this dude, there's this nasty dude living in there, and he just there's still issues to be dealt with, and that's that old programming. That CPU is still in there, and it's still sending out those negative signals. And but, dude, I I just I, I'm grateful for this process. You know, I'm kind of I'm kind of to learn really to be honest with you. After this process, if you're not learning something new or kind of going through some growing pains each day, then you're probably not doing it right anyway. That's right. Got it. Still experiencing those. Yeah. Both down moments, down, buddy. They're yeah. down. They, <laughs> but it's <clears throat> and it's a, coming at you from all sides. Things. That's for sure. Well, be like, oh, I did your butt for it. No, because you're having the your the other people are feeling these energies too. You can mm -hmm. see it, the way people act, like I was talking about. You can tell everybody's just in that negative zip. And you check you check the frequency of, of Gaia and, and it, whether we're messing with that, but that's I think that has to do with the energy too. Dude, this is just awesome. Well, I mean, that's like I was checking in some chats today earlier. And, you know, some of them would, you know, be kind of talk related or not. But in all of the chats, people were like, Oh, I just don't feel good today, you know. I mean, and so, like I said, it's not just happening to you at that certain moment. It's happening to a, a whole lot of people at the same time, you know. And that's what I'm saying, you know. And I've said it the way all these people have, are getting these same downloads or whatever. That many people can't be crazy. Something's going on. Mm -hmm. No, you know, I'm gonna tell you here. It was. It made me feel less crazy. <laughs> Uh, Wayne Steiger. Yeah, he, yeah, he's good for that. <laughs> he's definitely good for that. He, he, you know, and it was like it seemed like I had a question in my head. You go th through all day. All you do is you, you're thinking about this process, mm -hmm. and you go, "Wait a minute, I have this question about this," and I have noticed that there's this synchronicity that is happening with Wayne, and he's with talking about that thing. He's talking about that thing that you were, I was thinking about and, and giving an explanation for it and are making me think even more about it, helping me to pick that up a notch. Like the thing with the unconditional love, what is the definition? What's the true definition? With you. you know, I've seen a, a thumbnail somewhere one day where um, it was talking about the ancient's old Wi-Fi was the pineal gland. That was how we were, we're all connected. We have our own internet going on. But these advanced civilizations, I don't think they have these laptops. I don't think they have technology. The technology that they have is is thought. Yep. That's what I'm all saying. that's tapped in. They they are living. They're having campfire. Well, they're not living in that dimension anyway. But I imagine they're. I don't know. I'm sure we're going to find out. Yeah. We, it's not junk DNA, folks, I promise you. No, it's not junk DNA. <laughs> well, man, we've been going an hour, believe it or not. Have we? Yeah. That one's not too quick. <laughs> well, man, would you like to come back on again sometime? Oh, yeah. I'd That's love to have you back on, definitely. It's All like right. said, hell, it's flew by. <laughs> I'm glad. Is there anything you want to get like as far as a channel or a last story or anything? Um. Oh, my channel? Yeah. Oh, just it's just hour. same name, Brian Lunsford. You'll see a bunch of clouds because I'm always looking at the sky. <laughs> Come check it out if you like. Yeah, he put out some good. One. He's been hitting the. Uh, he's been lucky and been out on a boat the past few days. So, hence is why he uh, looks like a lobster over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, uh, I appreciate you coming on and. Uh, 
And like I said, I'd love to have you back on again sometime. Oh, absolutely, buddy. That that was this was awesome. It's it's, it's so good to be able to talk with somebody. <laughs> well, I actually you broke up at the end. I couldn't hear you. It's really good to be able to talk to somebody. Dude, it is. That's what I'm saying. And that's what's helped me more than anything is this community, man. And Good like morning. I said, I consider you a part of the family now, too. And, I mean, you've got my, you got my name, you got my number, you got my email. You need anything, you holler at me, I promise you. Same, man. You should plan on coming down here. Hmm. You're, not that, you're not that far away, but if you are down here, there's always a bed and a hot meal for you, buddy. You know that. Damn, that's good to have an offer like that, I'll tell you. I may have to take you up on that one sometime. You may have just got yourself in trouble. <laughs> oh, <okay. Bring> it. <laughs> Listen, you hang right here. I'm going to end it with the, everybody here, and, and we'll talk after the show. Everybody, okay. I want to thank you all for coming, checking in. Brian, thank you for coming and joining us. And like I said, awesome conversation. I love each and every one of you. Y'all have a beautiful night. And remember, there's always one of us there if you need us. And be the frequency you want to receive. Much love, love you. Have a good night.